Hello, dear people, you lovers. Uh, welcome, or maybe welcome back. I'm not sure how many people recently watched the videos. I still haven't told anyone that I'm doing this because I still need to find my groove, find out how to do this, how regular I can do this. If you check the dates between this and the last video, some time has passed. So, yeah, it's still still secret if you found this congratulations welcome to the show my name is michael i'm talking here about stuff mostly about japan because that's where i live and that's what i uh, like like it's weird to say i like a country I, mean, I i especially like japanese pop culture i, mean, I enjoy living here very much but uh, yeah i always feel like it's weird to like a country Especially if it has so many flaws as Japan, but still. Anyway, that's not what we're here for today. We're here for the pop culture. Exactly for Gundam. Do you know Gundam? I hope you know Gundam, because if you don't know Gundam, why are you watching this? You're weird. Um, anyway, Gundam is a super famous long running show or it's not a long running show they're just new shows all the time about uh, giant robots in space that uh, participate in war usually and they tell us that war is not so cool even though it looks pretty cool because there are giant robots involved so anyway um i'm not the biggest gundam fan in the world i watched the original series I watched the last one, the witch uh, from Mercury, and I watched the newest Gundam Seed movie, and now there's some construction noise. I'm very sorry for that, but they will never stop building that freaking house. Uh, I guess it will last forever, so we will have to tolerate it. I'm very sorry. Anyway, um, yeah, I watched basically these three things. Mm -hmm. How I came to Gundam was through the plastic models. Let me show you one, the most basic, the most normal, is uh, this one. This platform is falling apart. Yeah. So it's like the, the most common model. That's the main Gundam from the first show. And this is like a super basic, cheap model that was the first one I built and it's pretty fun. I got through the stuff um, through YouTube like some time ago, maybe two years ago. I sat here on my couch and I felt a little mentally dead. And I couldn't really focus on anything. I couldn't really do anything. I sometimes have that. So I, I need to find something that works for me. And I will do this one thing for quite a while. And then I will feel more normal and uh, able to do other things as well. So anyway, at that time I was just uh, pota pota potatoing on my couch uh, and didn't know what to do with myself so I watched YouTube and I saw this um, I think it was Adam Savage who built a perfect great Gundam unicorn so these models have different grades this is the most common that's the high grade and uh, it's a scale 1 to 144 and then there's uh, the real grades it's I think the same scale but more detailed and then you've got the master grade which is I think 1 to 100 and then there's the perfect grade I have no idea what scale that is but it's even bigger and more detailed and it costs a lot of money so I've never built a perfect grade well, some some master grades but yeah i just show this one today that's that was my first one the most basic thing ever uh, what i like about them is that i remember when i was a child we had like war stuff models like tanks and airplanes but you always had to glue them you had to put sticker on them you had to paint them to make them look good 
And this one is pretty fine without any glue or paint. Sometimes you have some stickers. There's a special type. Let's see. The short one is Verka. I, I have no idea. It's version and then the name of the guy who designed them, who starts with car. Um, they seemingly have a lot of stickers, but I never built one of those. And anyway, I, I watched this video and I thought, like, no glue, no paint, nothing. I mean, if you paint them, they look better. But uh, it's not necessary. It still looks fine like this. And... Um, it looked quite enjoyable, just cutting the pieces, taking off the, the like, whoop, uh, parts where you cut, you can usually see like a little, like left over or the color is a little bit off, so you just take some sanding paper and uh, grind it down and uh, yeah, then it looks nice and you just stick it together and you got a nice model. And it's pretty cool, it's very flexible, like you can move basically everything here. Yeah, and um, it's a lot of fun and I think it's super, super relaxing. And that's why I started building them. Last year I went to Tokyo and Yokohama. In Yokohama I saw the um, this Gundam in scale 1 to 1. Uh, doing a show. Um, now it's gone already, but uh, seemingly it uh, looks like it's coming to the uh, World Expo in Osaka next year. So finally I have a reason to go to this goddamn expo. Um, yeah, that's cool. And uh, in Tokyo, in Odaiba, there's a Unicorn Gundam, one of the other famous models. Same one-to-one -one size, but it's not as uh, movable. It's it's uh, does some some light effects, and it's pretty badass and cool. But yeah, it, it doesn't have this uh, moving ability. But the, the, the big one in Yokohama moves so slowly. I'll probably include some clip of the show in here. But uh, yeah, it's very slow. <laughs> it's still pretty cool and uh, yeah so basically I like the robots and the models more than I like the anime because I haven't seen that so much I always wanted to watch more I will probably watch Seed next because I watched the movie and I want to know the actual story <laughs> and um, yeah anyway uh, the reason why I'm talking here today is that this week I met one of my uh, students and he's a very, very big Gundam fan and builds a lot of models. And he told me that today at Yodobashi Kamara, that's the big electronics store around here, will get a new delivery of um, older models that were sold out for some time. And uh, he was very excited to maybe be able to get one of those models that he was looking for for quite some time. And the funny thing is I, I, I've completely got the date wrong. I thought it's tomorrow, not today. So I knew I must be there early in the morning, but I yeah, thought it's tomorrow. So I, yesterday I thought, oh, let's go to the gym late at night, have a, a late night workout, go to bed at 4 a.m. Also, I had to play some Elden Ring as well, because Elden Ring is really good. The new DLC is really good. If you think it's too hard, maybe you're doing something wrong, but that's a different topic. Um, anyway, yeah, so I, I got the dates mixed up and today I came home after the workout, like early morning, playing my Elden Ring and I look at the day and oh, that was like Saturday, not Sunday. So, okay, can't be helped, so I just went to bed and by complete accident, I woke up really early and I thought, okay, let's just go there, check how it is. And it's pretty weird. I went to the toys uh, floor, that's the fifth floor in Osaka here, and I, I look at the model, oh, where's, the, where's the fighting, where's the war, what's going on here? Uh, no new models, nothing, is it all already over? I have no idea. 
and suddenly I hear a voice behind me, like a guy says, oh, for the new Gundam models, you need to line up here. Yeah, he was just announcing the end of the line, and I was ac accidentally just then. Yeah, so I felt, okay, let's, let's line up, can't be that long and it was really really long i didn't take any pictures or videos of the line because i think that's really annoying and disrespectful there was one lady walking around with her phone and taking a video of all these weirdos uh, waiting in line to buy some plastic toys and i don't uh, know no i i no. it's it's for me this whole japanese people lining up thing is a little bit crazy too but uh, i guess i know joined the cult. Now, you, usually I, I feel like people, especially waiting at restaurants on their day off, like waiting two hours to get into a restaurant, is too weird. But here I, I didn't see how long the actual line is. I didn't know how long I'm going to wait. But yeah, I did it anyway because eh, I already made the effort to go there. And the thing is, is the shop opened at 9.30 and I arrived maybe 9.50. Yeah. So I guess a lot of people already waited before the shop opened, so probably from 7, 8 a.m. just to get what they actually want. I mean, for me, it wasn't that important. I saw what they will have. So yeah, some, some look pretty cool and uh, I wouldn't mind buying one, but it's not, not that important. If I wouldn't have gotten any, I would be fine too. Anyway, um, yeah, I was waiting in this line, and it, as it turns out, the line was basically once around this huge floor. Then there was a corner with um, a gaming stuff like laptops and computers, and you were just waiting around the shelves like zigzag, uh, really crazy. And total, in total, I waited about forty minutes. And the end of the line was just the register where you told the staff what you want and they would get it from the back. And uh, yeah, so no, no fighting, everything nice, well-mannered. What surprised me is that seemingly there was no rule how many you can buy. Other shops usually say, oh, this stuff is so popular, every customer can buy one model. Here, when it was my turn, finally, there were only basically two models left and some other stuff like figures and so on. So I asked, can I just buy both models? And the guy at the register said, yeah, sure, buy them both, or we'll take your money. And uh, I'm sure they would have sold everything even if they had one each, but yeah, they, they don't care, which I think on the one hand is nice because I got two models, but on the other hand, I don't like that because resellers. I really, really hate resellers because they just go there, buy a bunch of stuff and then sell it online for twice or three times the price. And it just, uh, it's not very nice. Don't be a reseller or I hate you. Anyway, so yeah, what I could buy is... Uh, a little bit funny. So when I waited near the register, I could see what people buy. So I saw everybody's buying the same model, and uh, therefore it was clear what they were, uh, what was basically left. So I expected I could buy this one, and it's uh, this one. That's the Infinite Justice Gundam Type Two from Gundam Seed Freedom. So. It's a new movie, right? So I have seen this. <laughs> um, I think the design is not the greatest one. If you look here, it's a bit, um, for my taste, a bit all over the place. Like it, if, if you clap out this, these rings, it looks like it's exploding, like it's going in all directions. Yeah, it's just going everywhere. And uh, I guess you you can you can uh, put it in some poses that look really nice. So that will be fun, and it's a uh, like the other one. It's an HG, so it won't take forever to build. I guess in in two or three evenings, I I might have this done. But 
I, I still have clothes and I haven't built. Is this even a Japanese word for the pile of unbuilt uh, plastic models? I forgot that. I'm very sorry. I'm stupid. And yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I thought yeah, this was pretty pretty good. And the other one, I didn't really notice what I would buy at the register. I just saw it's an SD model, and usually. I'm not the biggest fan of SD Gundams. Um, I, I prefer the, the cooler, like properly poor. Uh, well, what's the word? Proportions. Was the proper proportions? And um, anyway, it was an SD and uh, uh, relatively cheap. Let's just buy it and uh, then I came home and I looked at the box and I said, oh, this is actually pretty cool. Um, it's from the Witch of Mercury, the Caliban, and um, it says here, uh, SD Gundam and Cross Silhouette, and I didn't really know what this is, and uh, yeah, so I had to check, but um, it seems you have two, two frames. These two, like this is the SD, this is the cross silhouette, and the cross silhouette uh, has longer limbs, so you can make it a little bit less SD and seemingly a bit more um, uh, posable and stuff. So that's pretty cool. And uh, here, bows are included. I saw some models don't have bows. So you must buy the uh, cross silhouette frame separately, which I think is a bit annoying, but uh, this is pretty cool. And yeah, so you can make it really cute or a little bit uh, taller and still cute. And that's really nice. And I like the Caliban. It's a, it's a cool model. It's a cool uh, robot. So uh, I, I was suddenly uh, very happy that I bought this. So uh, nice, very nice. and. Uh, I guess I didn't mention why I suddenly started to like the SD Gundams. Um, there's a computer game that I bought because my student recommended it to me. It's called SD Gundam G Generation Cross Race. Easy name to remember. Uh, which is pretty cool and it's all with SD Gundams. It's a like, turn-based strategy game. So uh, something I like because like real-time strategy is not for me. I'm too stupid and too slow for that, so this is good. And uh, I'm used to this type of game, so uh, this is easy for me to play and it's very fun and it has all like SD Gundams and they're pretty cool and pretty fun. And so at some point I started to like them and maybe with this one I will like them even more. And uh, yeah, that's just a little Gundam rambling for today. Uh, watch Gundam, build the models, play the game, have fun. It's all good stuff. I need to watch more Gundam too. Uh, have a nice day. My name is Michael. I'm not sure if I, f I usually forget to mention who I am, right? Maybe I for for didn't forget it today. I don't know. Uh, this whole show is called The Compendium of Discomfort. If you find the German name, you will find it everywhere. The German podcast is uh, 10 years running now. And uh, not just me, but more people, cooler people, nicer people, more intelligent people, more beautiful people. But you won't hear that because it's audio only. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this silly rambling and uh, have a nice day. See you. Bye.